Right, this is freaking awesome. Uh, Rivian just uh, unveiled a pickup truck today, a fully electric pickup truck. It's called R1T. And in this video, I will talk a little bit about the specs and then I will show you some of the hidden features when I look closer at the images. But, um, all right, so let's dive into it. This is a fully electric uh, pickup with quad motor. You can get four motors, one for each axle. Uh, and then you can choose between the three different um, battery sizes, 105, 135, or 180 kilowatt hours. That is huge. That is more than any Tesla or any EV today. And then each motor can output 200 horsepower. And then combined, it will output 700 horsepower. And then they say that each motor for each wheel after reduction gear can output, I mean, to the wheel, you know, um, can has um, 3,500 newton meter torque and combined it's 14,000 newton meter. That is also massive. My car, <coughs> sorry for my voice, <coughs> my car, Tesla Model X P90D Ludicrous, has almost 10,000 newton meter torque on the wheels after reduction gear. This is the nature of electric cars. You have a massive reduction gear to get massive torque. And it will do 0 to 60 miles per hour in uh, 4.9 seconds or 3 seconds or 3.2 seconds. So keep in mind that uh, in order to get the fastest car, you have to get the mid battery size, the 135 kilowatt hour. I guess the 180 kilowatt hour is heavier. That's why it's slightly slower. And then whereas the 105 kilowatt hour, again, probably has uh, a different um, design on the battery pack. So it can't output the same uh, power. And uh, the range is said to be uh, 370 to 640 kilometers or um, 230 to 400 miles. Yeah, that is also very nice. <laughs> I look at these numbers like, wow, wow. And um, it can take 800 kilos of cargo on the bed. Yeah, I learned a new word today. The bed is that thing, you know, on the pickup truck. Yeah, I never owned or driven a pickup before. And then it can pull 5,000 kilos or 11,000 pounds. I'm like, what the heck? It can pull insanely <laughs> lots of time. I don't know how to put this. It's just, yeah, it's insanely strong. I mean, uh, again, I'm not surprised because, um, uh, you know, my car, uh, again, Tesla, is allowed to pull 2,250 kilos, but... Uh, I have a friend who has pulled 4,000 kilos with his Model X. Yeah, not by the book, but he did it, no problemo. But I wouldn't recommend it because um, uh, the Model X, um, the, the tow bar is not mounted on the chassis in the same way as it is in the pickup truck. That's why pickup trucks can pull so heavy load uh, legally. Yeah, but this thing, this beast, this R1T can pull a lot of cargo. And then uh, it's also very capable for off-roading, of course. So it can drive on one meter depth or three feet. And um, it has 20 to 36 uh, centimeter ground clearance, probably adjustable. And uh, 45 degrees climbing angle. And 45 degrees is 100% grade. That is just very steep. I never tried to drive that steep before. So um, it's a true uh, off-roader, of course. And then as for charging, it supports 160 kilowatt fast charging, DC fast charging, and has 11 kilowatt onboard charger. And uh, as for storage in the car, because this is an electric car, it frees up a lot of space. So you have this uh, 330 liter of frunk. That is insanely big. I don't, I'm, I'm running out of you know, words now, but... Um, it's so huge, 330 liters of in the front. Uh, in comparison, the classic Model S had a freaking big front also. That one was only 150. This is more than twice that one, you know? 330 liter front is like the same size as uh, some of these smaller EVs have in the trunk. Yeah. And also, the nice feature is that that front is powered. So you can open and close it. Um, from the screen, I will show you that later. And then there is more space. Oh yes, we have this, uh, they call it the gear tunnel, which is a big, like big tunnel that runs through the back of the car where you can put longer items. And then there is also this rear bin, which is under the bed, 
where you can put either a spare tire or more stuff 200 liters so lots of storage in that car and it also features three uh, household plug like uh, this is 110 volt but I guess in Europe um, hopefully when it comes to Europe if we get 230 volt is Shuko or something three Shukos or three household plugs uh, 400 watts each so that is enough to run whatever what you want to run you know uh, maybe tools or if you go camping you can run some TV or lights or whatever and also it has a built-in air compressor so very uh, very impressive <laughs> stats and then um, as for the cabin it supports uh, it seats up to five people and it has a panorama roof and 15.6 inch horizontal touchscreen plus a 12.3 inch instrument cluster that is also huge uh, and then a 6.8 inch rear touchscreen for the passenger in the back and then it supports um, over the software updates <clears throat> and it has a machine learning it has like it will upload data to the server just like Tesla pretty much you know but unlike Tesla this one will have camera and radar and ultrasonic sensors but it will have lidar yeah Tesla relies only on cameras and um, all the other sensors but it, Tesla doesn't use lidar but it also has a, a high precision GPS so uh, this car will supposedly support a level 3 autonomy uh, Tesla is only at level 2 at the moment of course the new ones will go higher eventually but for my car is only level 2 so yes that was a very impressive spec now I want to talk about uh, I would say the hidden features because I look closer at uh, some of these high resolution uh, pictures and I saw some details that I think uh, not many people have been talking about so uh, the first thing I want to talk about is uh, um, the range <clears throat> because it's been said that okay it, it will do 640 kilometers 400 miles range so how realistic is it you know is it just some some fancy number <clears throat> very unrealistic number well if we assume that uh, the 180 kilowatt hour is the gross capacity and then if you look at other cars you can assume that uh, about 90% of that capacity is available energy and then the 10% is a buffer they usually have on the bottom, a bricking protection. So that means we should have at least 160 kilowatt hours available energy. So if you do the, the Asian math here, <clears throat> 160,000 divided by 640 uh, kilometers for the biggest pack is 250 watt hour per kilometer and if you guys have followed me for in my channel you know that 250 watt hour per kilometer is a lot like my big whale here my blue whale here when i'm doing like um <coughs> oh sorry for that when i'm cruising at the the, the highway i will probably consume uh, about 200 watt hour per kilometer this is of course a big pickup truck it's big it's not that aerodynamic so 250 what type of kilometer is realistic range so I'm based on this you know and also here if you see a picture of the front and if you zoom close in the front you see that they haven't made any like they haven't made any fake grill to make it look like a fossil car you know I, I like the way they design is that they just just screw this you know we're gonna make a proper EV we don't care about making it look like a fossil car you know yeah so based on that you know smooth front probably good aerodynamics and based on the, the calculations i believe that 400 miles or 640 kilometers range is realistic range it's not any dc yeah another detail here you can see here is that um, if you look closer at the, the door handles that looks like uh the model 3 or the nissan gtr style door handle where you can like push it in and uh, yeah I mean there are two possible uh, solutions I guess like the the door handles that retracts like about less or uh, eye pace uh, or the the ones that kind of falls out so um, I, I, I'm guessing it's more like model 3 all right uh, more details I found out by looking at the numbers I mean looking at the, the pictures so here we have a picture of the interior okay looks nice nice uh, but you notice something there are no manual air vents like most other cars there's no manual air vents so this is again same similar design as model 3 where you probably control everything from the big touch screen so that is nice yeah <clears throat> and um, also notice that the, the center console they left it open like that uh, like many other EVs so I like it too 
lots of space you can put your bag there you can put whatever in there or maybe there will be some aftermarket uh, accessory you can have some kind of center console but I like that you have big open space don't try to enclose everything in uh, traditional design um, and then also, also if you look close at the screen here you know it's um, I'm I'm really happy that um, they provided some high resolution uh, pictures that you can zoom in on details so if if I zoom in here you see that on the screen you have the button for I guess opening and closing the frunk like motorized frunk and also the same the gear tunnel you have on each side you can open and close the gear tunnel um, and also that back door, I'm not sure what it's called, that uh, back door, but it's like the door for the bed. And there's two settings to like open it and then kind of like open it low. Um, and then another detail is uh, if you look at the steering wheel, I see that, okay, it has a stock for um, adaptive cruise control. Because there are limited uh, buttons on the steering wheel, just some, uh, some scroll wheels on left and right. Where most other cars, they have, uh, they usually have the, the adaptive cruise control settings on the steering wheel. But this is more similar to Tesla here yeah, in a way. And then uh, there this seems to also be um, a stock for uh, adaptive, like, I mean, for air suspension to adjust the air suspension. I guess uh, maybe that's uh, common in uh, pickup trucks. I'm not sure. And uh, also another thing is that uh, you know that the, the gear tunnel door you see here. Uh, there's a picture of it. Uh, I read that it's it's really strong. Like you can you can step on it. You know it's been designed. This whole car seems to be designed to be like very rugged. You know you want to use it properly. You know go in the nature, go camping or whatever. And then okay, uh, some other details I looked at is um, here we have a picture of the frunk, and I was thinking oh, what what the heck? Um, so that is a huge frunk, very impressive frunk. But where the heck do you put, fill your washer fluid? Uh, yeah, that's weird. Uh, maybe maybe they, they didn't implement it yet, but they, there's got to be a way to easily fill the washer fluid. And it should be in the front somewhere. Yeah. So maybe this is just a, you know, a concept, a prototype, so they haven't thought of everything. Just like in the Roadster, you know, the, there's like a um, uh, weird looking uh, wiper. Yeah. Another thing I saw was that, uh, you know, okay, it's very impressive to have a big ass in instrument cluster, you know, that that's tiny, you know, that screen behind the steering wheel. But uh, you see, it's just wide open. So uh, that got me concerned because uh, when you drive in the daytime and in, in sunny, uh, there will be glare. And also, the screen seems to be um, glossy and not matte like it should be, in my opinion. So that will just increase the number the, the increase the glare so they have to they have to make a, some kind of roof or whatever like you have in a tesla or other cars otherwise they would be way too much glare um and the nice feature i mentioned that you know there are household plugs right um in in the back there in the in, in the bed i guess but uh, when i zoom in closer i saw that it also has three USB C type yeah nice also some stuff uh, I should also mention the charging because you see here that uh, okay so we have a charge port uh, on the, the the opposite side uh, I, I, my opinion the charge port should be on the driver's side it's more convenient because uh, you want to get out and plug in from that side uh, uh, some people will argue that no you you want to have the charge port on uh, on that opposite side because it's it's better when you park and charge on public charging but you know this is this is not a city car you're not gonna drive around the city with this car you you and you have so good range so you will charge at home and then you go to your destination camping or whatever so uh, that's why you should have it on the driver's side which is more convenient when you charge at home um, and also uh, 11 kilowatt onboard charger is not gonna cut it again in my opinion yeah uh, it should be 22 kilowatt because the battery the biggest battery is 180 kilowatt hours so after charging loss you get about uh, nine and a half kilowatt and that means it takes up to 20 hours to charge it up so uh, it, it should be 22 kilowatt because then you cut it down to at least 10 hours so it means if you arrive at some destination which has 22 kilowatt especially in Europe uh, you can charge up during the night uh, and then in the morning you have full battery again whereas with the 11 kilowatt you will get like uh, half battery and then you have to fast charge somewhere 
Uh, and then, okay, uh, I should also mention towards the end here that um, they say that the delivery will be uh, in late 2020. So, you know, I'm going to be very busy in 2020 to review all the cars that will be coming out <laughs> in 2020. Um, so, um, before you guys start asking me uh, what do you think, I will try to give you the answer. What, what do I think about this car? It looks nice, you know, it, it kicks ass, it has lots of features, it has lots of storage, it's a very practical car, you know, this is like, when I saw it, I read about it, I look at the video, this was like music in my ears, because up until now, uh, let's say if, for the last like five, uh, five, ten years, the EVs that have been coming out are somewhat limited, even, even Hyundai Kona, you know, or Kia Niro. I mean, I love the cars, but where's the tow bar? You know, where's the over, over the upper and um, over the air update? Where's the big touchscreen? You know, where's uh, all the all the stuff that people need as uh, to replace the um, the fossil car, right? Uh, and then the Rivian has all that stuff. You know, so it has all the goodies that you you uh, you want, so you can you can move from fossil to EV, like, right? yeah, so I love it, I love it, I, I hope they succeed, I really hope they succeed, it won't be like, um, what's it called again, uh, lucid air, yeah, that went into thin air, so, oh, okay, sorry, sorry, I hope they didn't offend anyone, but, um, uh, but then again, uh, the question is, uh, what about Tesla pickup truck? Yes, a Tesla will come out with a pickup truck, and my gut feeling says that, um, Tesla will match or be better at uh, many of these specs. Might not have all the features, but uh, Tesla will still be a strong contender and Tesla will have the supercharger network. We don't know if uh, Rivian will also be able to charge on supercharger network. This, this, yeah, this will be interesting, but uh, uh, well, I think Tesla and Rivian and maybe other uh, pickup trucks coming out in the future can coexist just like EVs today coexist you know uh, not everyone wants to buy a Tesla or uh, an i3 or whatever so yeah so there's lots of space for variant I mean different variants of different um, manufacturers to sell their EVs in the future but will I get it Will I order it? Um, no, because I'm not a pickup guy. I mean, yeah, you you might be thinking, oh, yeah, this is the perfect the perfect car for your nimber trips. Well, no, I mean, nimbering is not my main income source. I do it for fun. I love driving. Uh, I would love to test the Rivian, of course, but I'm not gonna buy it and go camping and sleeping in it and haul items in there. No, 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 no. I will still use Optimus Prime. I still love this car. This car is the best car for me. It's not might not be the best car for you yeah uh, and also I'm not gonna get a Tesla semi yeah I'm a little bit tired of explaining why semi is not for nimber task yeah it's this car this car is perfect with a trailer yeah so um, I think uh, that's it yeah I was a long video um, very interesting this uh, this car yeah and also they will also reveal um, I think it was a SUV so uh, coming soon maybe using the same platform so that that would also be very nice to hear about uh, so yes I think that's it it was a long video but uh, hopefully interesting for you guys so I hope you guys enjoy this so talk to you later